Hey everybody, Nomadic Fanatic, Eric here, along with Jax the Cat. If you missed my video a couple days ago, I said I would like to hear from my viewers and see you and do a question and answer, and I am so amazed at the turnout. I was able to find so much video. Look, I made a promise to you guys, I am going to air everything I can, except the channels that were categorized as music. I couldn't download every single file from the music channels that uh, YouTube wouldn't let me, but... I would say I've got 98% of y'all, and no matter how long this takes, even if it takes a couple days, don't worry if we don't get to your question today. we got a lot to go through. This is way fun. So let's tune in to the first viewer here. Hey, Eric. It, uh, Chuck here, and this is Chi-Chi. Chi-Chi, stop that. Anyway, had a question for you. Uh, I've been following your channel for uh, a while now, and uh, got interest, because of it, got interested in having my own channel. And uh, having your own channel, what kind of camera uh, is best? Uh, also, uh, what uh, video editing uh, software you've got? And just, you know, so many advice for uh, starting your channel and that kind of stuff. Anyway, Chi Chi and I would both appreciate it. And thanks and keep up the good work and keep staying positive. Awesome. Thank you, Chuck and Chi Chi. And thank you for the question. Uh, you know, I, I always like to say that the, the best camera is always the one you have, no matter what. It's all about the story you create. Right now, I'm filming on a little GoPro. I didn't even bring out my, my Panasonic or my Canon this time. Just whatever works, whatever's most convenient. I do tend to go for the GoPro more because it's a run and gun. I can get the shot quick. I don't got to focus or worry about lighting. I like my GoPro setup. As far as editing, I learned to edit uh, while I was going to college, and we didn't have Final Cut even though we were working on Mac computers. I learned on Adobe Premiere, and I pay a membership to Adobe. I think it's like 21 bucks a month to get the latest versions of Adobe Premiere Pro Creative Cloud. That's what I like the most. And as far as growing your channel, just reach out to those that have something in common with you. Try to get on their video. Oh, look, I see what you did there. You know what I mean? I would always try to chase early on all the people that I admired and the people that I looked up to in that industry. I had to track them down, and I had to try to get into their video. That's, that's one tip I can offer for you. Hi, Eric. My name is Todd Price. I'm from Elizabeth in Tennessee, and we've been watching your videos for a long time. My question is, why don't you uh, get a smart car to drive? Be something different. And say hi to Jax. <laughs> Thanks, Todd. Jax says meow. Uh, you know, I, I like the smart cars. I actually looked at them. I know they're really easy to tow. But as I've been kind of saying lately, you know, even with the Mustang and stuff like that, I really do like my motorcycle. I'm just, it works so well right now. Let's, uh, let's, let's put that off about 10 years into the future, Todd, and it's very likely that you see me in something very small, like a smart car or a little Honda Civic hatchback like I used to have, or GeoTracker or something. It, it just depends. Right now, I'm enjoying the motorcycle life. This is Randy from Missouri, and uh, I just admire all the things you've been able to accomplish. It's just amazing all the things you've experienced and shared uh, I just love your cat. Say hello to Jax. And uh, would you ever consider someday touring Europe or some other part of the world? That would be pretty cool. Who knows? Thanks for your question, Randy. Absolutely. Uh, I've been thinking about it a lot now. I've been thinking about going on cruises. That's why I got my passport. Uh, th these are going to be short little trips, I'm thinking, because I'm going to be without my kitty cat. I'm probably going to hop on a plane or a boat and come over there. I'm going to rent a vehicle that you got over there so that I have uh, a place to stay, a uh, place, to, uh, something to drive around and explore. I absolutely look forward to it, and I promise you, if you stay with this channel, you are going to see me overseas, and it will be in less than 10 years, all right? Thanks for the question, Randy. Hey, Eric. Chris from Toledo here. My question is, what is the worst road rage incident you've either witnessed or been a part of? Thanks, bud. Thanks for your question, Chris. You, 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 would, you would think that I see a lot on the road. I see a lot of craziness. Um, not, to, not to point at a certain industry or anything, but the most comical types of road rage I've seen have been from truckers captured on my, on my cam. And uh, I saw a car come in and get a little too close. I mean, they used the blinker, but they didn't give him like three car lengths. And the trucker was, was right next to me, blared on his air horn. I'm like, whoa. Okay, he's honking at the car that cut him off and everything. 
Well, the trucker then puts it into and he goes past me to get back in front of the car. And I literally watched him out the pass like he rolled down the, the passenger uh, window and threw a Bud Light can at the car, hit him right, tink, 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 and then went under my RV as we're driving down the highway. And then he got in front of the car. And then as soon as I saw the, the, the brake lights from the truck, I'm like, no, I got back over to left lane. Cause I mean, I'm not going to be part of some road rage brake check type stuff. Uh, I've seen a lot of crazy stuff. <laughs> a professional driver drinking a beer and throwing beer cans at a passenger car though. Plus the car cut him off. I mean, I see lots of road rage basically, Chris. Yeah. Thanks for the question though. I'm Chris with Camp Moore bark less and today's video what we're going to talk about is eric from nomadic fanatic asked if anybody has any questions to make a video and ask it in the video and he'll answer it so here's my question how do you do your night time lapses i want to know camera settings and what cameras that you use and how you do it because your night time lapses are excellent Thank you, Chris. What an awesome video there. That was really cool. And that's a great question, too. Uh, I, I, I love doing my star lapses or night lapses uh, o overnight. And so I use my other GoPro, not this one. I use my GoPro 7, and it has a little night lapse feature. And I generally have to change the settings depending on how much light is in the area. But I'll take it outside and do some tests. And generally what I'm doing is I'm setting it to about 30-second exposures. Those are 30-second open exposure pictures and the interval is one minute generally i set my iso caps at 200 for the lowest and 800 for the highest on that and i turn pro tune on and i adjust the kelvin accordingly anywhere between 4500 to 6500 again depending on the other ambient light at the campground or area and then i simply press record and it does all the magic it creates all those pictures then i take those 600 pictures from the gopro i bring them into adobe premiere and i turn them into about a 10 second second by uh reducing the size down and i make it a 4k file and then when I bring it into Adobe Premiere for the actual video, of course I can play with it, zoom in and out because it's a 4K video and I'm working in 1080p. I know this is getting technical and everything. And then I add some color correction. I bring out the whites so you can see the stars moving and stuff like that. But yeah, just GoPro outside and I secure the GoPro with an alarm outside and I generally try to keep it pretty discreet so that you can't see it overnight. But yeah, thanks for your question, Chris and Kentmore Barkless. Hi, Jack's Kitty. I'm Claire from Wisconsin. Do you have a girlfriend? <laughs> Claire from Wisconsin. Jax doesn't have a girlfriend, and I'm sorry, Claire, but Jax just did not like other kitties. Jax likes puppies and people. He's really cranky about kitties. I don't know. Claire was kind of cute. Want to give a shot? Okay, we'll get back to you on that one, Claire. Hey, Eric. Which guitar riff do you like best? Number one. <laughs> Or number three. Wow, that was really cool. That last one there sounded like a like a Brad Paisley riff. I think the first one was my favorite. You got you got some good skills there on the old guitar. Thanks for sharing that. Hi Eric, my name is Bonnie from upstate New York, aka Curvy Girl Bon. My question to you is about two years ago you had a meetup at Disney Springs around Christmas time and you met my uh, youngest son Kyle and my question was have you had any meetups that didn't work out so well? Stay safe and stay healthy. Thank you Bonnie, I remember meeting your, your son Kyle in, in, in the parking lot near the RV actually, that, that was fun. Um, have I had any, okay, trying to think back. Now, I haven't had any meetups since then. I've had a couple problems in the past with just the land and area. The problems that I have on the road are so different than anybody else. But as a, as a nomad with a few haters, anytime I, I get live somewhere or anytime I announce something that's actually going to happen, some of the garbage and trash tries to cut in and shut that kind of stuff down. And one, and one of the greatest examples was when they uh, called off our Rife Lake meetup in Washington State. Um, I believe that was just before the Disney Spring ones, downtown Disney one. And uh, they basically just called law enforcement and, they, and then they said, yeah, if you're going to do this big, it's got to have permits and stuff. And we've been getting overloaded with phone calls and whatnot. And yeah, it's pretty, pretty sad. 
that they had to do that. And since then, I just don't even bother with it anymore. I'll go to somebody else's meetup. I'm not going to set one up. It's just too much of a headache. But thanks for your question, uh, Kirby Bong Girl. All right, 360 gal here, Michelle. I just have a quick question. Being a single pet parent, how do you prepare for emergencies, like if you're not going to be there and take care of your cat in your rig? Okay, good question, 360 gal Michelle. I appreciate it. Uh, we have we have a few things. I mean, I don't. I generally don't stay out of the RV too long without Jax. I have a stroller if it's going to be too warm or too cold. But the RV is climate controlled, which is kind of a nice thing. Uh, I can just set the thermostat and keep it warm enough for Jax. I can also run the air conditioner off solar while I'm outside if it's going to be more than an hour or something. I've got the camera inside so I can keep an eye on him live from my phone wherever I go. And I can also do my remote start where I can start the cab AC in an emergency uh, if something else wasn't working. So, yeah, that's pretty much what I do. Otherwise, how about just chase good weather where I don't have to worry about safety and stuff. But the camera camera system is really nice. Yeah, thank you. Hi, Eric. I'm Angelica. And I'm Paul. And this is Dino. Tomorrow is his birthday. He's going to be two years old. We wanted to ask you what your favorite birthday memory with Jax is. Well, happy birthday, puppy. I think that means his birthday is today while I'm actually filming this. Happy birthday, guys. My favorite... Jax, have you had any favorite birthdays? I'm trying to think. Um, well, we did one in California one year where Jax got to go outside and we had all his presents in the RV. And then he got really high on catnip on the bed. You guys remember that video? Like, a, a side of Jax we've never even seen. He was so hyper and so happy. We love all his birthdays. I mean, we love celebrating birthdays, and sadly, we're going to celebrate one alone this April. But yeah, thanks for sharing, guys. You guys stay happy. Stay warm. Hi, Eric. My name is Wolfgang, and I'm from Germany. I would like to know whether you have viewers from Germany, and probably even subscribers from Germany, and even more, even patrons from Germany. Oh, thank you for the question, uh, Wolfgang. Uh, Germany is pretty far away. I have no way of knowing where all, where y'all are from. You, I, and you also got to realize, this is the first time that I get to peek on the other side of the lens. In seven years on YouTube, I've never seen your faces. So this is, this is so neat. You have no idea how cool this is for me to finally put a face to some of the names on YouTube and Patreon. But uh, honestly, I'm not really able to track where everybody is from. I love hearing about it. But uh, Wolfgang, let's go ahead and ask my viewers below and let's find out. Is anybody else on YouTube from Germany? If so, let Wolfgang know in the comments below or if you are from another uh country overseas somewhere other than the united states where Jax and i are from let us know in the comments below where you're from i'm interested to hear that thank you hey eric former full-time rver matt here i know you've talked in the past about buying a piece of land and possibly building a tiny house or something along those lines and i want to know if you've been considering that further or where you would be interested most interested and if you'd want to do it in conjunction with RV life or instead of uh, RV life. So let me know what you're thinking. Oh, great question, Matt. Yeah, I, I have kind of hinted at it or talked about it, looking at land or looking at prices and stuff like that. Right now, uh, I don't have an area in mind. I would like to homestead a little bit, you know, maybe have a horse and some chickens, stuff like that, uh, and, and little to no real zoning issues. And it's got to be by a river or creek. But as far as a tiny house, no. I, what I want is like a spot to park an RV with full hookups. And uh, it wouldn't be permanent. Even 20 years from now, I still want to be able to turn the key in this and get out for a couple months. But having a home base with full hookups on a river is absolutely something I see in my future. Uh, so thank you for the question, Matt. Hey, Eric. It's Josh. And my question for you is, do you like having a gigantic cat? Because I do too. Josh's kitties there. I love my big kitty, but my big kitty has lost six pounds now in the last 14 months. He's not so big. He's just he's just healthy now. I love my big kitty. I think I think I think people who like cats are cool people in my book. What do you think, Jax? All right. Take care, Josh. Hey Eric, I'm Scotty. And I'm Melinda. We are Simple Life Big Adventures in Middle Tennessee. My question for you is what are some hobbies you'd like to participate in? 
but it's just too difficult because you're a full-time RVer. And my question is, with all of the adventures you have already had, what state have you had the most fun in? Oh, good questions. Scotty, uh, as far as hobbies, yeah, there's certain things I miss. I used to play tennis a lot. I still have my tennis racket somewhere in, under the bed, actually. But uh, just traveling by myself, it's hard to find other people that are just happen to be at the tennis court and want to play. Uh, I, I, I do miss that. I also miss drama and theater back home. You know, you got to be in one spot and you got to be 100% available in that one spot for a good three months to get it done. So I haven't been a part of any productions, uh, both on the stage or behind the scenes in the stage. And I do kind of miss that, too. Kind of hard to do as a full timer. And Melinda, your question was the favorite state that I liked. Um, I'm probably always going to say Washington State. Just just to be in, just to RV in, and, and I miss Washington State, although they have some weird laws going on, but they have, uh, Washington State's still my favorite, yeah. Hi, Eric. I'm Shelly Sugino from a YouTube channel, Shelly Sugino, and you have always been an inspiration to me when I was starting out with my channel. But I've always wondered this. Originally, you said that you were chasing 70 degrees. And I wondered how and why that you end up sometimes in very snowy places and very hot places. So did it have to do with your rig or, or what was the deal? What changed where you quit chasing 70 degrees? Thank you for your question, Shelley. I don't think it was on purpose necessarily. I still want to chase 70 degrees. I still tell people that I chase 70 degrees. But the fact of it is, is, is uh, you know, going north to south, which is what I started doing on the West Coast, was really easy to manage that. When you start doing these cross-country trips like Lincoln Highway, Route 66, uh, stuff like that, you know, the elevation changes and, and uh, the, the territory and just it's impossible to do. I mean, you saw I tried to do Route 66 in 66 days and it went from, you know, almost freezing rain in Los Angeles to five days later, 111 degrees in the Mojave Desert. And then back down to, I, I, think, I think we were back in the 50s a couple days later. It's, you know, the more you move, which I tend to do a lot more now, the more you move, the harder it is to chase 70 degrees, certainly. But as a geographical, you know, planning, quarterly planning thing, I'm still trying to do that. And I'm doing that right now here in Illinois. And when the summer hits, I'm going to go back up north somewhere where it's a little cooler and continue to chase 70 to my best ability, okay? It's not all my fault, though. Yeah. Eric. Ravon here from Oregon. What was the most powerful motorcycle you've ever ridden? Thanks for your question, Ravon. Uh, the most powerful motorcycle I ever rode was a dirt bike. It was a Kawasaki 650 dirt bike. And that was, that was in my early 20s, okay? Uh, that was the most powerful motorcycle I've ever sat on at all. Test drove or anything. Now everything is under... 250 cc's so i'm kind of a motorcycle lightweight all right eric i got a question for you i don't think anyone else has asked it or not that i found because i searched on youtube and uh didn't come across anybody asking it do you have any intentions of ever coming up to canada oh actually we talked about this on my live stream uh, the other night yeah it has been my plan to go explore other countries not only mexico but also canada i mean i would like to spend some time in there not just to get to alaska like i'm not just going to use it for a route but yeah certainly i i would like to go to canada and i've been researching that and i have been trying to make plans on that several summers now several summers and my summer plans always seem to change thanks for the question buddy hey Jax, this is casey the Bichon from Alberta, Canada. Looking for some tips on pets during quarantine. By the way, you look positively perfect. Oh, thanks, Casey. That was very sweet. Jack's man, what kind of tips do you have? What, what, what do you do? He says he says he sleeps. He says he's getting really good at sleeping, cat naps, and uh, forcing Dad to take him outside to eat some grass so he can puke it up a little bit. Uh, but honestly... What he keeps telling me is that he absolutely loves all this extra attention because with me stuck in the RV more than normal and not driving, like Jax is actually really adapting really well to this quarantine. He loves it. He would just rather just stay this way forever. Believe me. Hey Eric, this is Cody from Boston with the Atlantic Paranormal Society, otherwise known as TAPS. And my question for you is, do you believe in ghosts? And if you do, 
Have you ever had an experience that you would consider paranormal along your travels? Thanks. Talk soon. Cody, thanks for the question, buddy. Yeah, I definitely believe in ghosts. Uh, I get freaked out really easily being alone on the road in new places. I have a video. I don't even remember where it was. But I, I was somewhere somewhere in the Midwest, I think, and I was filming on a creepy... I was already creeped out on this weird bridge that was supposed to be haunted, and all of a sudden it sounded like somebody jumped off the bridge when I was on the bridge completely alone. And you can hear the splash. It's not fake or anything. It's a, it's a real live splash in stereo on my recording that you can pick up, and I took the F off after that. I could not wait to leave that, that bridge and that body of water. And I, I remember I had, I had goosebumps. That's not the only time. There have been other things that have creeped me out or scared. I do believe in the paranormal. And paranormal and I do believe in ghosts, Cody. Yeah, thanks for the question. Good morning, Eric. Hi, I'm Mark at Mark's Charter Bus. When did you get your aha moment on YouTube? You know, whenever it was like, wow, that video really took off. Good question, Mark. Thank you. I would say that I remember distinctively getting that aha moment about one year into my channel, one year exactly, actually, to, to, to the day. On December 6th of 2014, I found myself down in the uh, Arizona desert after recently uh, turning on monetization for my channel, and I got my first check for uh, 1200 bucks for my work on YouTube. And uh, at that moment, realizing that I could pay my bills and make an honest living just making YouTube videos, I said, this is it. I'm putting everything into it. And, and from that point forward, uh, without, I mean, I looked back a couple times. I had struggled along the way, but still, I knew that YouTube was going to be something that me and my cat would find fun and be able to uh, keep the dream alive with uh, paying all the bills. Thanks, Mark. Hey, Eric. Beach Bumps Forever here. Bill and Amanda, our question for you. What is your favorite Beatles song? Did you say Beatles song? My favorite Beatles song? Haven't I played a Beatles song on my guitar on this channel? I, I know I have a couple of them. Uh, my, my favorite would definitely be Let It Be. That's my favorite Beatles song, and yes, I can play that on the guitar as well. Thanks for your question, guys. Enjoy the beach down there in Florida. Hey, Eric. It's your buddy Big Sean here at Modified Auto Sound. Got a quick question for you, man. What was your favorite stop on Route 66? I'd love to hear your answer. I can't wait, buddy. Thanks. My favorite all-time stop on Route 66. Right now, I have to say, and I know it's not that old, but it is Route 66. It would be the Pops Stand, where you can get all the flavored sodas. I think it, I think it represents what we want to see Route 66 continue to, to grow and have new stops, new attractions along the way. And I think looking back 20, 30 years from now, Pops will, will eventually be something that looks old school on Route 66. That's my favorite stop both times. It was, yeah. Hi, Eric. I am Steve. This is Susan. This is Pinky. And this is Paul. Together, we're a raft of wandering otters, and we live here in the Central Coast region of California. Have you run into people who are traveling long time or full time that have medical issues like cancer. Uh, Susan is cancer free for two years now. Or autism. Paul has is an adult with autism. Oh, thanks for your question. We got Steve, Susan, Pinky, and Paul there in that video. And yeah, guys, I have met uh, a lot of people. I've met um, some dis d disabled nomads that uh, chase the really good parks that have the amenities for that. Uh, I know some people that have some medical conditions like need to be on a CPAP machine or just have some extra things that they need on the road. And, and let me tell you, man, if, if you want to do it, you'll, you're going to be able to find a way to uh, get it done. Uh, I wouldn't be discouraged. Uh, it's going to be tougher. It's going to be trickier as a full timer. Uh, I'm sure there's obstacles no matter what. But uh, yeah, th thanks for your question. Definitely. As Jax leaves, lost the star of my channel. Hello, Eric and everybody else out there watching. Uh, and Bella wanted to say Where? to Jax, and uh, we were kind of still stuck here in Florida, and we're planning our escape though, but I guess I'm wondering, my question is, now that we're down to a handful of states that don't have travel restrictions and another small handful that they're only partially in effect, I guess county by county, I'm guessing those are the areas that, you know, the country, 
mainly I think out in the Midwest, basically. I guess, guess that's where you're probably headed to spend some time at, that we still have some freedoms to move. I guess that's because they're so sparsely populated uh, that they're really not, um, not much of an effect with the virus and all that going on. So, yeah, I guess I'm not wondering what your plan is. You spend some time out in those areas. Yeah, so to still have the freedom to travel like a nomad should. <laughs> um, I guess that's all I got. Take care of everybody out there. Thanks, Dave and Bella, for the question. Yeah, so so Dave's RV life, is that what it's called? Dave's RV life, yeah. So he went down to Florida right as I was trying to get out of there before the lockdown hit. And, and Dave's kind of stuck down there in Florida right now, where I just came from. And uh, But to answer your question there, Dave, no, we... we we don't have free range up here to like to like move around uh, to go do the normal RV life. Is that what you're referring to? No, um, we're not just able to go around and go back to normal yet, even here in in the Midwest. Uh, we're all just kind of giving it the the guidelines some time here, at least through April 30th, and just trying to stay put as as an RV community. You trying to go over there? Go ahead. So we're, 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 we're not back to normal yet, and I don't think there's an area anywhere that is back to normal or will be until at least May at, at, at the earliest. But my plan right now is just to hunker down right, right here, and I've made some summer plans uh, east of here. If, if, if I'm allowed to get back on the road, I've made some summer plans to go east and then possibly north. That, that's my plan there, Dave. Thanks. And bye, Bella. Miss ya. Hey Eric, Kimo Dave here. I've been covering you for four years and one question I've always had is <clears throat> why you decide to put your name in big letters on your vehicles. I know you have some issues with security and uh, I know you don't always like people to know exactly where you are when you're filming a video and, and will put your videos up time delayed so that when they know you're at a certain area, you're gone from there. Do you find sometimes you regret not being in an anonymous vehicle um, for your security, for just getting, you know, with so many people subscribed to your channel, do you think that's sometimes a problem? And would you ever go to the point of just going out in a nondescript vehicle with your name not on it? Because a lot of the YouTubers that I cover don't put their names on the side of their vehicles, probably for, for some security reasons and for whatever else. Just quick, just curious, thanks. Okay, Dave, uh, thanks, thanks for your question. A, a lot to unpack with that uh, question there. First of all, uh, the, the ending part there where you said uh, uh, most RVers don't put their logo on their RV. Um, I don't follow any YouTubers who don't have their logo on their RV. You know, Aja, Pandemonium, uh, Dave, we just talked about Dave's got decals for his on there. Uh, Destination Open Road and Micah Living Free and... Like all the RV nomads I know all have their logo on their vehicle. And, and it, actually, this is a really important answer because there's a, there's a clear difference between advertising the channel and what you talked about with like safety concerns and stuff like that. Uh, you know, and, and, and they don't mend together. They're not the same thing. So in other words, my, 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 my safety is I don't like to be stopped somewhere where some of the garbage on your channel, unfortunately, tries to do bad things to me live, to either the business or just mess with me in that area. It's got nothing to do with the logo at that point, though. It's just based on where I where I parked and everybody knowing how to take advantage of that. As far as a logo, I mean, there's a statistic there that for every day you spend on the road, your logo is going to be seen by a thousand people a day. And that's great advertising. And I love it when people drive by on the left side and the passengers got their phone and they're going... They're, 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 they're typing me in there live as they're driving by. I love seeing that, and I love hearing from people in the comments like, hey, I just drove past you in such and such city, and I subscribed. I get that all the time. It's a great advertising tool, and uh, it doesn't affect my safety at all while I'm on the road, and it has nothing to do with when I get parked in a place like this. I mean, I'm just just, just pointing that out. However, the other, and the last part of your question was, would I ever just go non-discreet? Absolutely. In fact, that was my plan with Yoda, was to wear the wrap for five years. I said I was going to advertise really hard for five years. And then after that, pull it all off, go totally discreet, normal, blend in, and uh, feel good about growing the channel and where I'm at and growing it a different way after that. And uh, I, I can honestly say that I think we're still there. I think four years from now, I probably don't advertise the channel at all. I just I just choose not to. And it's not for safety. It's just, I'd like to be able to just sneak in as a normal RVer at that point. 
Okay. We're going to stop there because I don't want these videos to get too long. But don't worry, guys. Your questions are coming. I, I'm, I'm going to do it. So guess what? How about a video tomorrow? And then we'll do a video after that. Okay? Every day we're going to do a video. Okay, guys? All right. From Jackson I, be well. Bye, guys.